Hello, Anthony Fasano here from Pass the PE Exam. In this video, we will be using the Hazen-Williams equation and its derivatives provided in the PE Exam handbook to calculate the flow rate within a run of cast iron pipe. This question forms part of the structural mechanics section of the PE Exam and was created and solved by engineer in training Enrique Ivers and is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. This time, we're looking at a problem involving the flow of water. We're told that this water is at room temperature and it flows through 2,000 feet of 8 inch 20 year old cast iron pipe, and that dimension is nominal. We're given the internal diameter, and the pressure decreases by 5 psi as it starts at 90 psi at the source, and by the time it reaches the discharge, it's at 85 psi. We're then asked what the flow rate is in gallons per minute, and we're given four options. 340, 440, 540, or 640. There's a lot of information here, and we should identify the key pieces. The length of the pipe, and that is the distance that the water flows, is 2,000 feet. The internal diameter is 8.18 inches. So we should use this as this is the uh, actual diameter, the physical di diameter, not the nominal diameter. The pipe material is 20 year old cast iron, and this seems like a very arbitrary fact, uh, but knowing the type of pipe will be necessary to calculate the Hazen-Williams coefficient if we are able to use the Hazen-Williams equation or one of its derivatives. The initial and final pressures are 90 and 85 psi, resulting in a difference or a drop of 5 psi. And last, but definitely not least, knowing that the water is at room temperature allows us to use the Hazen-Williams equation. This is very important. This gives us direction on how to solve this problem. Our unknown that we're searching for is the flow rate in the pipe in gallons per minute. We have some key equations at our disposal. The first one is the flow velocity equation, where V is the flow velocity, Q is the volume of flow, and A is the cross-sectional area of the pipe. And we have the Hazen-Williams equation, where V equals K sub one times C times R sub H raised to 0 0.63 times S raised to 0 0.54. This is given in the PE handbook. V is the flow velocity, K sub 1 is one of two values depending on if we're using SI units or USCS units. So it's either 0 0.849 or 1.318 for USCS units. C is the Hazen-Williams roughness coefficient, which is dictated by the pipe material. R sub H is the hydraulic radius, and S is the slope of the energy grade line. The PE handbook also gives us a variation of the Hazen-Williams equation, and that is the circular pipe head loss as pressure. This is the equation that we're going to use. P is equal to 4.52 times Q raised to 1.85 divided by quantity C raised to 1.85 times D raised to 4.87. P is our pressure loss, so that is PSI per foot of pipe. This is a unitless um, or dimensionless, dimensionless value. Q 
Q is flow in gallons per minute. D is pipe diameter in inches. And C is the Hazen Williams coefficient. Again, for this problem, it's critical to identify that the water temperature is at room temperature. If it wasn't, we wouldn't be able to use the Hayes and Williams equation or any of its derivatives. These equations are only valid for water between the temperatures of 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Otherwise, we would have to use the darcy weisbach equation. So, the PE handbook provides a list of values for the Hayes and Williams coefficient C. We're told that the material is 20-year-old cast iron, and we can see that on this table it's listed and the value of the coefficient is 100. Since we're using the circular pipe head loss equation, let's substitute in our values. Recall that P is PSI per foot of pipe. To find this, we divide the difference in PSI by the length of the pipe, so 5 PSI divided by 2,000 feet. We also substitute in our roughness coefficient for 20-year-old cast iron pipe, 100 for C, and the diameter of the pipe, 8.18 inches. Q is our only variable left, so we continue to solve for Q by simplifying. After a few steps of simplification, we ultimately find Q to be equal to 438.65 gallons per minute. This is very close to answer B, 440 gallons per minute, and we can assume this small discrepancy to be resultant from uh, a rounding error. So we choose answer B, 440 gallons per minute, and this is the correct answer. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, we will solve more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Past the PE exam videos will publish weekly, so please be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your PE exam result. And please, I encourage you to ask questions and leave comments below this video, and I will respond to you. Let me know if there's a topic that you'd like me to cover or a specific question that you need answered. Past the PE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE Exam.